Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Put a smile in your smoking. Buy Chesterfield. Smoother. Cooler. Best for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. The owner of a small delicatessen reports that he's been robbed. He says the thief casually walked out of his store and disappeared. Your job? Find him. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking. Instantly, you'll smile your approval of Chesterfield's smoothness. So smooth, so satisfying. You want them mild. We make them mild. Mild and mellow. With the smooth and refreshing taste of the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. So next time you buy cigarettes... Stop! Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Sunday, October 9th. It was overcast in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith, the boss of Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. My name's Friday. I was on my way back from communications. It was 3.48 p.m. when I got to room 27A. Robbery. I got it. Robbery Friday. Yeah, just a second. Give me that pad. Man. Yeah. Sir. All right, go ahead, please. All right, I have it. What happened? How long ago? All right. Right away. Thank you. Guy came into a delicatessen over on Sunset. Took out a pretty big order. Yeah? Sack full of money. 4.15 p.m. Frank and I drove out to a small combination delicatessen and grocery on the corner of Sunset and 3rd. The owner of the store, Mr. Paul Claypool, told us that the robbery had taken place approximately 20 minutes earlier. He said that the patrol car officer who had answered his call had left to make an immediate search for the suspect. Gave a real good description, I did. Yes, sir, you said that. Kept my wits about me. All the time that young hoodlum was in the store, I was studying him. Didn't let him catch on, of course, but I was making mental notes. I wonder if you'd tell us just what happened, Mr. Claypool. How's that? Well, we'd like to hear about the robbery right from the beginning. Oh, check it up on me, huh? Sir? Making sure I give you the same story I gave that other cop. Oh, no, sir, that's not the idea. <laughs> I told him everything there was to tell. Well, we'd like to hear it, too, that's all. You ain't gonna hear nothing different from what he did. Well, would you tell us anyway? Well, if that's how you want it. This year, crook fella came walking into my store, big as life. That, that's how it begun. Mm -hmm. That was about 20 minutes ago, was it? Oh, it might be 21 or two, but now it depends on how long you've been talking to me. Yes, sir. What did he say when he came in? Bandit fella? That's right. Nothing. What? Nothing. That's what he said. Not a single solitary word. I see. Didn't even open his mouth. Just handed me an envelope. Yeah. Sealed it was. Sealed up shut. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Struck me as being kind of peculiar. What do you mean? Well, uh, lots of my customers bring in lists of things they're supposed to buy. They don't seal them in no envelope, though. I see. My instinct show was right. <laughs> it wasn't no grocery list. It was far from it. Is that so? Note inside, hand-printed it was. I see. Wonder what it said? Well, that would be nice, yes, sir. Take all of the money out of the cash register, put it in a paper bag, and hand it over. Uh -huh. That wasn't all. You want to hear the rest? If you would, please. Don't do any talking. Don't try to stop me. If you do, I'll kill you. That was the end of it. Do you still have this note, Mr. Claypool? Right over there. It's laying on the register. Mm. What if we could see it, please? Well, that's up to you, I guess. Hmm? 
Other cop said I wasn't to handle it on account of fingerprints. Well, we'll try to be careful with it. Help yourself. Ain't my place to take no chances on destroying valuable evidence. Yes, sir. Well, had it right, didn't it? Word for word? Yes, sir, you sure did. After you read this note, what'd you do, Mr. Claypool? I done just what it said. You gave him the money from the register? That's right. Put in a paper bag at number eight. What's that, sir? Eight, eight. That, that was the size of the bag. Oh. How much money did you give him? All there was, a neighborhood of $50. Most of it in bills? Most, I'd say. A couple of tens, three or four, five, some ones. Uh, rest was changed. All right. What happened next? The fellow took the bag, kind of grinned, and walked out. Looked real pleased with himself. Did you see where he went? Left the store. Yes, sir. I mean, after that. Turned down the street. To get into a car? I didn't see none. You didn't try to follow him? Nope. I didn't aim to stick out my neck none. Figured that was up to you fellas. That's right. Now, Mr. Claypool, do you know if the robber had a gun? Must have. Did you see it? Nope. But uh, that there note said he'd kill me if I gave him any trouble. Yes, sir. Must have had a gun if he aimed to kill me. Well, stands to reason. Yes, sir. Was there anybody else in here when he came in? Just me. I don't do much business this time of the afternoon, and not on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I don't. Had you ever seen this man before? Nope, not that I recollect. I wonder if you could describe him for us. Oh, sure. I told you I gave him a real good once over. Yes, sir. First off, he's a young fellow, right around the old 20, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Husky, about 5'10", maybe weighs 170. Not fat, you understand. He's just husky. Mm -hmm. well, what about his coloring? Well, I'm coming to that. Yes, sir. Brown hair, medium brown. Kind of gray eyes, medium complexion. Any marks or scars? No. How was he dressed? Pants, uh, dark colored, serge, more than likely. Blue serge. They looked like they was part of a suit. Mm -hmm. Couldn't see his shirt. He had on a sweater, yellowish, with the, one of them uh, them collars that chokes you. What's that? Uh, fits all around your neck, you see, like so. See? Turtleneck sweater? Oh, oh, is that what you call it? Yes, sir. Turtleneck, huh? Well, that's a right good name. That's just what it looks like. Turtle poking out his neck. Yes, sir. Is there anything else you can tell us about this man? What have you got in mind? Well, Mr. Claypool, anything that would help us identify him. Well, sir, he acted real funny, almost like he didn't know what he was doing. Oh? Kind of looked at me funny, too. Hmm. Don't know how to put it into words, exactly. Yes, sir. Why don't you come down to City Hall for a few minutes, Mr. Claypool? City Hall? Yes, sir. We'd like to show you some mug shots, see if you can make an identification for us. Well, that means closing up the store. Well, it won't take very long. Well, I guess it will help catch this fellow. We'd appreciate it. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir. Claypool's delicatessen. How's that? Who? Friday? That's for us, sir. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Huh. Here you are. Thank you. This Friday. Yeah, that's right. How long ago? Fountain? Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Well, we won't need you downtown just yet, Mr. Claypool. Change your mind, huh? Yes, sir. What's that? Flower shop over on Fountain. Yeah. Sounds like the same guy. Frank and I told Mr. Claypool we'd check with him later. We left the delicatessen and drove out to the Pringer Flora shop on Fountain and Selma. 4.42 p.m., we talked to the victim, Miss Norma Devereaux. She seemed to be extremely agitated. She told us that a man had walked into the store about 4.30 and gave her a sealed envelope. She showed us the note the envelope had contained, and it appeared to be a duplicate of the note Mr. Claypool had been given. Did this man say anything to you, Miss Devereaux? I, I, I don't remember. I don't think so. Well, did you say anything to him? Oh, I, I was too scared. Yes, ma'am. How much money did he take? Well, I gave him all there was, everything in the register. I see, but about how much would you say? I'm not sure. You see, I, I don't work here. I was just helping out. Mm -hmm. The store belongs to my sister and brother-in-law. I see. They wanted to take their children for a ride this afternoon, so I said I'd look after the shop. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I never should have offered. I might have known something like this would happen. I've had a funny feeling all day long. Is that right? It's a bad week for me anyway, this whole week. Huh? According to my horoscope. Oh. And you don't have any idea how much money was stolen, Miss Devereaux? Well, I don't think it was very much. A few bills and some coins. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know what day this is? The date, I mean? Yes, ma'am. This is the 9th. The 9th. Oh, mm -hmm. I might have known. She said to be especially careful on the 9th and the 11th. Why didn't I pay more attention to that last reading? It certainly cost me enough. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Devereaux, you notice where this man went when he left the shop? What? Did you notice where he went? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't pay any attention. I was just so relieved that he was gone. What if you describe him for us, please? Well? Miss Devereaux? I'm trying to think. Yes, ma'am. It just comes up a blank. His face, everything about him. Well, how's he dressed? I'm terribly sorry. I 
just can't remember. Well, maybe we can help you. Was he wearing a coat or a sweater? That's right. A sweater. I remember the sweater. Mm -hmm. What color was it? Uh, lightish, I think. I'm not sure. What kind of a sweater? Would you recall that? Just a sweater, I guess. Mm. How about his hair? Eyes? Anything at all, Miss Devereaux? Well, there's one thing. I, I don't know whether it would do any good or not. Yes, ma'am. I feel like such a fool not being able to remember where it was or when, but I'm almost certain about it. What's that? That I've seen him before. Frank and I continued to question the victim. She insisted that she had met or seen the suspect sometime before the crime, but she was unable to recall the circumstances. 5.38 p.m., we drove both victims down to the city hall and asked them to go through the mug books for the purpose of identifying the suspect. Well, we finished another book, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Seems like you sure have enough of them. Yes, sir. If I could only think where it was... Ma'am? ...that I saw him before. Yes. Could I get you folks some coffee? That sounds like a right good idea. How about you, miss? What? Would you like some coffee, too? Miss Devereaux. That's it. That's it. I remember now. His face, everything about him. It's the same man. I'm positive it is. Oh? It was when you mentioned coffee. That's what brought it back to me. Yes, ma'am. Now, just when was it you saw this man? Oh, uh, let's see. It was last week when I went shopping for a new coat. Tuesday. Yes, that's when it was. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I was having lunch. The Fairway Cafeteria in Hollywood. Yes, ma'am. Well, it was crowded, and I was sitting alone. He came by and asked if he could use the same table. All right, go ahead. I nodded, and he sat down. I didn't pay any attention to him. N not really. I just went on and finished my lunch. He was still eating when I left. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can tell us about him? I think he had on the same clothes he was wearing today. The sweater, anyway. I remember the sweater real plain now. I see. Now, you're sure this was the same man who robbed you? Oh, yes, I know it was. Mm -hmm. That'll help, won't it? My remembering where I saw him? Well, it might. I'll bet he eats there all the time, at that same cafeteria. Yes, ma'am, we'll check on that. Oh, he does. I just feel certain of it. You'll see, Sergeant. It was fate that made me go into that restaurant, and it was fate that made him sit at my table. Yes, ma'am. It was all part of a big plan. Our meeting like that, and then him robbing me today, it was all part of a big plan so that you could catch him. Yes, that's right. And you will catch him. Don't you worry about that. You'll catch him. Fate's against him. Well, that makes us even then, doesn't it? What? So are we. Now that she remembered seeing the suspect before, Miss Devereaux confirmed Paul Claypool's description. We asked the victims to continue going through the mug books. They were unable to come up with an identification. 6.31 p.m., Frank and I drove them home and we went off duty. The next day, October 10th, 10.05 a.m., we interviewed the day cashiers at the Fairway Cafeteria. They couldn't recall any specific customer who answered the suspect's description. 11.46 a.m., we went back to the office. Robbery, Friday. Yeah, Larry. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks, anyway. All right. Sloan. Yeah? Says he can't give us a lead from the way those notes were printed. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, how about an early lunch today, huh? It's all right with me. Where do you want to go? Well, I don't care. How about you? Doesn't make any difference to me. Well, suggest something. No, oh, I told you it doesn't make a difference. Well, I don't know why it always has to be up to me, Joe. Hmm? Where we eat. Why don't you decide once in a while? All right, fine. Let's go over to that new Chinese place on Broadway. For lunch? Well, why not? Well, you don't want Chinese food for lunch, Joe. I don't. Huh? Of course not. Well, what do you got in mind? I might have known. Hmm? I'd end up making the choice. Sure is a problem, isn't it? Well, it gets kind of monotonous, that's all, buddy. Well, it's tough. Say, well... Uh, yeah, something we can do for you? Uh, is this here where you, you the guys that handle robberies? Yeah, that's right. Like them two yesterday? Which two? Grocery store and flower shop. You know something about him, do you? Yeah, I know something. Well, just what is it? Who robbed him? I know who it was. Yeah. Well, I guess it was me. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. It's today's biggest cigarette news. Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. The Accuray controller is the greatest improvement in cigarette making in years. And it's a Chesterfield exclusive. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield. 
giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. So buy Chesterfield today. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. A perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes smoother. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes cooler. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. <laughs> The man who would come into the office answered the description we'd received from the victims. He was in his early 20s, stocky build, about 5'10", brown hair and gray eyes. He was wearing dark blue trousers and a yellow turtleneck sweater. He told us that his name was Harvey Tilden and that he lived in a rooming house on West Ivar. He readily admitted the two robberies, but he insisted that he had not meant to commit the crimes. I didn't know what I was doing, that's all. I just didn't know. Well, what are you trying to sell us? Were you drunk? Of course not. I hadn't had a drink, not even a beer. Well... Well, he told me it was money they owed that I was collecting it for him. Who told you that? Stoney. Who's Stoney? Well, that's all I know him by, Stoney. And you were collecting money for him, is that it? Uh-huh. And you expect us to buy that, too, don't you? No, I guess not. Well, then why don't you try giving us the truth? Well, look, now, may I'm not the brightest guy in the world. If, if I was, I wouldn't be in this mess. Yeah. I come to you on my own accord, didn't I? Well, maybe you got scared. Maybe you figured it'd go easier with you if you gave yourself up. Isn't that it? yeah. I guess I can't blame you for thinking that. Sure was a dumb trick. Well, why'd you do it then? Because I didn't know, because he told me it was just a job I was doing. Mm -hmm. Stoney told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's hear it your way. Yeah, well, you, he, he said he worked for a kind of collection agency, you know, where they go after them deadbeats, you know? Yeah. Well, he said he had to have somebody to help him, only part-time, but the pay would be good. Yeah. Offered me the work. Mm-hmm. I ain't had a steady job lately. Sound kind of good to me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was supposed to meet him yesterday afternoon, 3 o'clock. He picked me up in front of the place where I live. Yeah. Drove me past that grocery store and parked around the corner. Gave me an envelope and he told me to take it inside, hand it to a fellow who worked there. He said I was to make sure nobody else was in the store on account of he didn't want to make the old guy feel bad by collecting the debt in front of somebody else, you know? Yeah. So I done what he told me. I give the old guy the note, he give me the money, and I took it back to Stoney. Well, where was he while you were in the store? Well, around the corner, like I said. Why didn't he go in with you? He wanted to see if I could handle it myself, on my own, you know. That's what he told me. Mm-hmm. Well, then we, we drove over to that there flower place. Same routine. Yeah, only this time I got kind of suspicious, you know. Yeah. She acted so scared, the lady there. didn't seem to me that having to pay up a debt would make somebody so scared. I, I told Stoney afterwards, he said it was just an act that they all put on like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I didn't exactly believe him, so the next place we stopped, I opened up the envelope before I went inside, and I read that there note. Yeah, well. Well, I didn't know what to do. Uh, finally, I went back to the car, and I really told him off, Stoney. I told him I wasn't no thief. I told him he had to return all that money. What did he say? He just laughed at me. He said I was the biggest pigeon he ever met. I said if he didn't take back the dough, I'd go to the cops. He told me you'd throw me in jail that you'd never believe a word I told you. Mm -hmm. What happened then? I got out of the car. I said I wasn't no crook and nobody was going to make me be one. Mm -hmm. I was heading right for the police station. Then I, well, I got to thinking. I seemed like maybe he was right, that nobody would believe a story like this. Well... Yeah. So I went home. All right, why'd you come in today? Well, I didn't sleep none too good last night. It was kind of worrying me what I'd done. I figured maybe he'd find some other sucker like me and pull that same stunt over again. I didn't want him to get away with it, so I decided to take my chances on you guys. I, I ain't going to get a short cow now, am I? You know where the Stoney lives? No, he never said, not to me. And you don't know his last name either? Uh-uh. Well, where'd you meet him? Hentley's gym. Or on Olympic, I hang out there sometimes. Uh -huh. You a fighter? Oh, I, I, I had some bouts, yeah. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you and Stoney get acquainted? Oh, I don't know. We just started talking one day last week. He come in for a steam bath, and afterwards we were both watching some of the guys work out. Oh, I see. He was there again on uh, uh, Saturday. That's, that's when he offered me this job. Mm-hmm. What kind of a car does he drive? Chevy. Sedan? No, uh, coupe, hard top, last year's model. You know the license? No, uh, I don't pay no attention. Mm. It wouldn't matter if it did. I ain't much at remembering things. Yeah. Can you tell us what Stoney looks like? Yeah, why, he's a big fella, uh, sharp dresser. How old is he? 35, maybe 40. Mm. What color is his hair? Sort of red. Anything else? Scars, anything like that? No. That's the whole story, huh? Yeah. You didn't know you were robbing those stores? You didn't have any idea? Honest, I didn't. Sounds crazy, don't it? Yeah, it does. Joe, Mm -hmm. talk to you for a minute. Yeah. You wait right there, Tilda. You okay? Okay. You must think we're pretty done expecting us to fall for a line like that. Yeah. What's he take us for? I don't know. It couldn't be true, not a word of it. Yeah. Heck of it is. Yeah. It's such a darn fool story, Joe. I just can't help believing him. I'm a lower. Hmm? So do I. Frank and I continued to interrogate the suspect. He maintained his innocence, and we were unable to shake him. We ran the name Harvey Tilden through R&I. They had nothing on him. We also ran the name Stoney through the moniker file, and we came up with two possibles. We pulled the mug shots and showed them to Tilden. He tentatively identified one of the photos, James Brightstone, but he wasn't positive. We telephoned Brightstone's last known address, a small downtown hotel. They told us he'd moved during the summer, and they had no idea of his present whereabouts. We checked DMV and our own vehicle records. They reported that a late model Chevrolet was registered in Brightstone's name. Harvey Tilden was held in custody for further questioning. 4.08 p.m., Frank and I drove over to Hentley's gym on South Olympic and talked to the owner, George Hentley. What's right? I'm sitting. Stoney. Right. Yeah, that's right. Full name, maybe you, James sir. Brightstone. We're not sure. Hmm. Away. Don't ring a bell. He in a fight game? Well, we aren't sure. How about a Harvey Tilden? You know him? <laughs> that jerk? Sure, I know. He come here pretty often? Well, off and on. Used to do a little boxing. Had a perfect record. Six fights, six KOs. He was hmm. punchy before he ever got in a ring. Tilden says this is where he met this Stoney. That yeah, could be. Take a look at this picture, will you? Never seen this guy before. Hey, you got a hmm. left hand? Use it. Well... You know, I wouldn't swear to it. Guy looks something like this. Been coming in lately. Works out, takes a steam bath. You know his name? I never asked. You been around a day? No, not so far. When was the last time? Do you remember? Uh, end of last week, Friday, Saturday. Are you talking to Tilden? No, oh, I don't know. Maybe guys come in here, friendly type guys. They all talk to each other. All right, here's our card. So, this fellow comes back. Give us a call, will you? Hey, you want him for something? We want to talk to him. Okay, if he comes in, I'll call you. Thanks. Sure, I'm a real obliging type fellow. I got no beef with you cops. Uh-huh. Uh, be a waste of time though. Hmm? Calling you. If you want to see this guy, all you got to do is turn around. What's that? He just walked in the door. <laughs> Frank and I talked to the man George Hentley had pointed out. He readily admitted that he was James Brightstone. He also admitted knowing Harvey Tilden. He said he had spent the previous afternoon in his room at the Jackman Hotel. We telephoned the hotel, but the clerk was unable to confirm Brightstone's alibi. 5.31 p.m., we drove the suspect down to the city hall and continued our interrogation. Uh, look, why don't you guys just tell me what it is you want to know, spell it out in real big letters, and I'll give you the answer, same size. Where were you yesterday afternoon? Thought we already covered that. Let's go over it again. Okay, boys, I was in my hotel room. Well, the clerk doesn't back you up. Well, does he say I wasn't there? When was the last time you saw Harvey Tilden? Saturday over at the gym. Not yesterday, huh? Gym isn't open on Sundays. You know where Tilden lives? Nope. You picked him up at his rooming house yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> Why would I be picking a crumb up like that? Did you offer Tilden a job? Oh, that's pretty funny. What's the joke? <laughs> I ain't got a job myself. Did you ever take Tilden for a drive? Boys, I'm telling you, the only place I ever seen the guy is Hantley's gym. Yeah. He knows what kind of a car you got. Oh? Make and model. Well, maybe he's seen me and I didn't see him. Mm-hmm. Now, look, this Tilden fellow, he's a screwball. He don't even know what time it is. Uh, whatever he told you, you can forget it. Well, there are a couple of things we can't forget. Yeah? Tilden says you put him up to robbing two stores yesterday. Are you kidding? He says you hired him to work for you to collect some past due bills. Boy, this kid is really off his rocker, isn't he? Maybe. <laughs> Where was I supposed to be while he was doing me these favors? Outside in your car, waiting for him. Mm, go on, boys, you interest me. Well, that's about it. And uh, you'd pick up a guy in a phony story like that? Hey, look, I'm getting out of here. Tilden ain't the only guy who's not... Sit down, Brightstone. All right, you jokers, prove any part of it. We're going to try to. I'd like to know how. We got a team out right now checking the neighborhood of both robberies. If anybody saw your car around those stores yesterday afternoon, you got trouble. I got news for you guys. It don't matter where I was yesterday, you can't tie me into these jobs. We'll see. Matter of fact, I'll give you a hand. 
I might have been driving around those stores yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, come to think of it, I went for a ride along about 2 o'clock. Slipped my mind before. It. Sure. Not that I know where Tilden pulled his heist. You don't, huh? Sure, of course not. Then what makes you think you were in the vicinity? Well, I'm not saying I was. I'm saying I might have been. Yeah. Just where were you? Who knows? It took me a real long drive. What time did you leave your hotel? 2 o'clock, maybe. What time did you get back? Later. How much later? <laughs> All right. I, I tell you what, I'm going to give you guys a break. Good. Now, I know you can keep this up for 72 hours, and I got more important things to do, so let's get it over with, okay? It's entirely up to you. Okay. Okay. Tilton was giving it to you square. He was just a pigeon. Dumbest pigeon I ever ran into. Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's it. You got it now. What are you going to do about it? What do you think? Oh, if you're smart, you're going to turn me loose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, let me give you a little advice. Free. So Tilden was a fall guy, all right? I admit it to you guys. Yeah. But to nobody else. <laughs> Anybody else asked me, I deny it, the whole thing. So you might as well play smart. You figure on sticking me with this rap, you got to have a signed confession. I ain't going to give it to you. Well, now, maybe we won't need it. Boy, you got the biggest rocks in your head. Tilden was in those stores I was, and he took the money I didn't. You go into court, you come out looking dumber than he does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's my word against his. You think anybody in their right mind is going to believe this boy? You think he'd stand a chance of convincing the jury? Well, he might. <laughs> Fat chance. He convinced us. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 8th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. The date, June 19th. The man in question, Father. The gift for Father's Day, Chesterfield. Make it a point to pick up a couple of cartons, first chance you get. It's the easiest way I know to put a smile in Dad's smoking and a nice way to remember a great guy. The district attorney failed to issue a complaint against Harvey Tilden. James Hill Brightstone was tried and convicted of robbery in the second degree, two counts. Robbery in the second degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than one year. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Vic Rodman, Virginia Gregg, Eddie Firestone. Script by Frank Burt. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. This is it. L&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Notice the color of L&M's miracle tip. It's white, pure white, to give you the purest and best filter. And L&M gives you a rich, good-tasting, fully satisfying smoke. The kind you can get only from highest quality tobaccos. Buy L and M. It's got everything. Flavor, taste, mildness, and the best filter. L and M. A courageous chaplain honored as Mr. Citizen thwarts a prison break and converts a juvenile delinquent to a new way of life. Don't miss Mr. Citizen this week. Check your local TV listings for time and station. Hear Dragnet next week, same time, same station. Hear Biography and Sound on the NBC Radio Network.